The following medical drama is fiction. Any resemblance to actual medical personnel was unintended. In particular, the character of hard-drinking Dr. Horton Van Hoon is in no way a depiction of Los Angeles Hospital's moderate-drinking Dr. Horton Van Boon. We apologize for the confusion. a minute in nine years. Oh, Eleven. <laughs> Has it been that long? Oh, you look great, too, but I expected to find you in surgery. Oh, I don't have much time for that anymore. I'm chief administrator now. Half bureaucrat, half carnival huckster. But don't get me wrong, I'm still saving lives. Oh. Here, have a pen. The Greenwater Clinic. Yeah. We're your health store. Catchy, huh? <laughs> well, how do you like your new office? Oh, I love it. But, but, but why did they move psychotherapy down here? It used to be on 7. Oh, uh, well, we did a little survey, and we found out that suicides from this window are much less successful than the ones from your old office. But hey, oh, Betty, that in no way reflects on you. <laughs> You're going to be fine. That's important. Mm -hmm. I'm really grateful to you. I've had some... Uh tough times lately. <laughs> well, this job's a real godsend. No, no, you're gonna be fine. Well, listen, I won't let you down, Horton. I promise. It just, this feels like a new beginning. I don't know why, it just, it just feels right this time. Don't you think? I don't think. I know it. Now you get unpacked and comfortable. We've got a staff meeting in an hour. A staff meeting already? won't let you down, I swear. <laughs> okay, give it to me straight, Kirby. How bad is it? Well, let's see. Would you say that Vietnam was bad? It was no picnic for me, fella. That was a tunnel rat in monsoon season. Erica Nettle's been appointed city commissioner, and she's after us. What? Commissioner Nettle cites pending malpractice suits, fiscal insolvency, a string of mysterious deaths, and widespread reports of animal attacks on patients as but a few of the problems plaguing the aging health care facility. These are problems. Name a hospital in this country that doesn't have these problems and more. I can't. But you know Erica, sir. She's a pit bull. Yes, she is. And apparently my ass is her chew toy. Are you happy now, oh, you imbecile? Christ. Rand, will you show just a shred of respect for my time and save this for the staff meeting? Now, if you don't have an appointment... An appointment? You babbling drunk! Nobody has enough respect left for you to even knock! 
I'm the head of both vascular and microsurgery, and the only cutter in this outhouse who doesn't have a lawsuit pending. You should be down on your knees, kissing my hammer toes. You'll probably enjoy that, you twisted creep. Guys, guys, let's try to keep this nice. Who are you calling a guy, you insect? Rand, you know I'm not to blame for the current conditions. You know how tough it is to run a hospital these days with insurance, rising equipment costs, the occasional cave-in. A hospital, like any other business, has to pay its bills. Well, maybe this hospital would be able to pay its bills. If you'd return your empties. Are you through? No, I'm not. Tell me I dreamt this, but I heard that you're going to rehire that idiot Betty Rose. Not going to, I already did. Are you mad? She's a complete incompetent. She's even more incompetent than you are. I beg to differ. I think it's an honor to have her on staff here. And you'll treat Dr. Rose with professionalism and respect. Otherwise, I'll put you on suspension. What makes you think I'll sit for that? Although you're one of the top surgeons in your field, your temper is infamous. There's not a hospital in this country that wants to hire you. And considering the bad press we're receiving lately, your resume is looking sadder by the day. You're ruining us all, Van Hoon. No, Rand, you ruined yourself. Now get out. With pleasure. Oh, and cue ball. Catch! You'll cool off. World-famous magician Nicholas Nickleby denies he's angry with his supermodel wife for quitting her glamorous career and becoming a lowly nurse's aide. Oh, give me a break. Our love is not just a sexual one. It's full of laughter, magic, and something I call the secret of the Sphinx. What exactly does that mean? That's creepy magician talk for. I couldn't give a jaded old hose bag an orgasm. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. I hope you all have had a great laugh at my expense. Nikki want me that the world outside of modern would be cruel and ugly. But nothing prepared me for this vicious wetness. Excuse us, Gamine. But we don't appreciate you using our livelihood as a publicity stunt. Stunt? This is no stunt. This is my life. I've been working in this godforsaken hellhole for over a month. Do you think I would have given up modeling if I didn't truly want to help people? Admit it, Gamine. You didn't give up modeling. You got fat. <laughs> You're wearing a girdle. I'm not. Then strip and prove it. Oh, you would know about stripping, Sylvia. Ask any man coming out of that Portuguese titty bar across the street. It is not Portuguese, it's Persian, and it's very classy. If, if one of the men were to touch me, Fahad would cut his hand off. If I touched your oily skin, I would cut my own hand off. <gasps> Before you talk about my appearance, little Miss Cover Girl, I think you better go check your implants. It looks like one of them is leaking. It's envy. It's all envy. I'm wealthy. Well, you have a run in a pair of swap meat penny holes. You talk, 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 Sylvia, but all I hear is envy. Hey, don't you think you were a little hard on her? Yes, I was. Good morning, Pumpkin. Oh, goodness, Daddy. How long have you been standing there? Long enough to be very disappointed in my little girl. Actually, I can explain. No excuses, Sylvie. You are a Van Hoon and a board-certified registered nurse. But how's anyone to know it if you don't wear your name tag? Oh, Daddy. Can you ever forgive me? Of course, Gumdrop. You're the one thing left in my life that gives me any pleasure. Thanks, Daddy. Dr. Coy, Father Shank, hello. Could you tell me where the staff meeting is today? There's big yellow biohazard tape blocking the conference room door. Sure, it's in Dr. Van Hoon's office in uh, five minutes. Great, I'll save you a seat. Hubba hubba. <laughs> Which is 
start the meeting. Yes, you go ahead, Kirby. I've got your back. All right, everybody, let's get this started. First, I'd like to comment about this ugly and completely groundless article in today's Greenwater Siren. It's a smear, plain and simple. Chief Administrator Van Hoon and myself think you're all doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Courts, there will be city investigators in the clinic this week, so I'd ask that you all just stay on your toes. I'm sorry, I didn't see this article. Did it say anything else? While it's no secret to anyone, there's been some strange deaths around the clinic. Last month alone, 72 patients passed away quietly in the night. Many of them accidentally choked to death by their own pillows. How creepy. Well put, you mean. Nurse Delmore, you run the night shift. Please keep your eyes and ears open. And switch over from nylon to all cotton pillowcases. Yes, Mr. Carter. Also, there are a growing number of patients complaining that somebody is trying to get affectionate with them in their sleep. Are you saying these patients are being raped or molested? Oh, not as such. So far, the reports are mostly of kissing and cuddling. I don't even know what to call that. Dr. Coit. Yes. You're head of anesthesiology. Please work with the nursing staff to reduce the dosage of sleeping medication hospital-wide by one half. Hopefully, somebody will wake up and we'll catch this guy. Check. Sicko. Mr. Carter, what about this bizarre animal that's loose in the building? Are you doing anything to catch it? Yeah, everybody yeah, should know that. Yeah, I'll take over now, Kirby. <clears throat> that is a vile rumor started by the newspaper. Oh, no, no, no. I saw it. It's like a a, a monkey with a, a big nose. You know, I think it's probably just a stray tomcat. You know, this sounds nutty, but yesterday a patient told me that in the middle of the night, a goblin sat on his chest and ate his jello. Oh, I swear to God. No, oh, I don't. Maybe we should set a snare with jello squares as a bait. Yeah. That oh, could work. You know, yeah, that works. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Quiet! 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 This is the last word on the subject. There is no creature loose in the Greenwater Clinic, period. What's next, Kirby? Betty Rose, sir. Oh, yes, Betty. And now I'd like you to all meet and give a warm welcome to an old friend of mine, and our new staff psychologist, Betty Rose. Dr. Rose, will you stand up? She's going to get to know everyone by doing stress tests on every one of us. I trust you'll all welcome and support her and help her find her way around her new home. Yes, let's all welcome and support Dr. Rose. I, for one, think it's an honor to work with a psychologist who claimed she had cured a man who later shot the Pope with a zip gun. I, I did cure that man. Then why, in your professional opinion, Dr. Rose, does he own a zip gun? That's enough! Rand, now listen, everyone. We're a family here, a healing family. We work together as a team. And I believe in Dr. Betty Rose, just as I believe in every one of you. Then you're a fool, Horton Van Hoon. Eric and Nettle. Our security must be a little lax today. I thought for sure you'd set off the bitch detector. Very amusing, Horton. May I have just a word with your warm and cuddly clinic family? Do I have a choice, Your Excellency? I just came by to say hello. And be sportsmanlike and wish you all luck as my inspectors ransack your files and record your every move. A little tip, though. Unlike Dr. Van Hoon, I don't have the least bit of faith in any one of you. So start reading the classifieds. One week from today, when all the evidence is collected, I will be in the position to close down the Greenwater Clinic once and for all. <laughs> 